let's talk about treatment of anaphylactic shock. There's two golden ways in the treatment. And the first is avoid the trigger, so prevention. And the other one is epinephrine. Epinephrine happens to counteract exactly those effects which make anaphylactic shock dangerous and it's underused in the ER. Avoiding the trigger is pretty obvious too. If you know what you're allergic to and you have had an anaphylactic episode before, it makes perfect sense to avoid it as well as you can. Avoiding the trigger is only possible if the patient knows what the trigger is and so identification is a very important part of anaphylaxis treatment and prevention. The first step is to take a thorough history in the ER. This is also important when diagnosing anaphylactic shock. We need to know if the patient has been in touch with a potential or a proven trigger. Patients might want to undergo an allergy test after they have recovered, but both serum and scratch tests have their disadvantages. Serum tests might identify IgE antibodies, but that doesn't necessarily mean that the patient is allergic to that substance. Skin tests, on the other hand, or prick tests are easy to perform and that is great in emergencies. But they are no use for finding non-IgE related substances. Many patients with a severe episode of anaphylaxis will have to change their behavior afterwards. For example, if there is somebody who finds out that he is very allergic to bee stings, that might lead to avoiding certain outdoor activities that come with the risk of being stung. If exposure cannot be avoided, epinephrine becomes the frontline treatment. It's usually applied intramuscularly into the mid anterolateral thigh and that's because that's the quick route of getting it into the system and one of the easiest. It can even be applied by yourself, so a lot of patients will have epinephrine auto-injectors, which they can use to inject epinephrine into that thigh once they have exposed themselves accidentally to a trigger. Now epinephrine has all the benefits you'd want. It's a vasoconstrictor, so it directly helps with the low blood pressure of the shock reaction. It's a bronchodilator, so it helps getting air into the lungs. It also reduces airway edema, which is especially critical to restore breathing. It has some other effects, like an increased heart rate and the relief of hives as well. The side effects are minor if you compare them with the possibility of death from anaphylactic shock. So there's paler, tremor, anxiety, palpitations, dizziness, and he headaches. None of them are extraordinarily severe, as long as the injection has been IM. If you do inject intravenously, which is relevant in some clinical settings, a severe epinephrine overdose is possible and can be deadly by its effects on the heart. Intravenous doses are indicated if cardiac arrest has already happened or the severe shock is imminent. ER treatment of an anaphylactic shock is centered around two things. One is stabilizing the reaction and the other one is getting the epinephrine in. First step always is to remove the trigger. So if the anaphylactic shock might have been triggered by an IV injection, stop that injection. The next step is to quickly assess the patient's status, the circulation, the airway, the breathing, the mental status, and the skin status, to see if it's an anaphylactic shock or not. If it is, if the diagnosis is positive, immediately call for help and at the same time apply the epinephrine. While doing so, you'll also position the patient on the back with the feet up or in a comfortable position if they feel otherwise or if they're about to vomit. All further steps about managing the shock. So if necessary, if the blood oxygenation is very low, you'll give O2 via a mask. If this doesn't work because the airways are constricted, intubation might be necessary. A good shock treatment is also to apply large amounts of saline solution intravenously. This increases the overall volume that's in circulation and can counteract the shock. And then obviously if the patient goes into cardiac arrest or if the symptoms become more severe, CPR is necessary. One very important point is that it is always necessary to keep monitoring the patient. Biphasic anaphylaxis is not that uncommon and patients might worsen suddenly later on. Clearly epinephrine is the first line treatment and it's a true lifesaver when it comes to anaphylactic shock. But there are also second line treatments. These are less indicated and less important but some protocols do suggest them. For example, antihistamines can be given to improve pain in the skin, itchiness, to improve nasal and eye conditions. Beta-2 adrenergic agonists can reduce coughing and increase the airflow in the lower airways. Glucocorticoids can reduce the chance of biphasic shock, even though the overall evidence is weak. 
for this to work. In the mid-run, it can be a good idea for the patient to get an allergy or desensitization treatment to make him less sensitive towards the treatment in the future. And there are treatments that work fairly well, for example, for insect venoms. They consist of several consecutive shots that are evenly spaced and the dose gets stronger and stronger. This kind of gets the immune system used to the trigger again. Desensitization with increasing doses can also work for a lot of antibiotics. Note, however, that it's often not necessary because it's quite easy to find non-cross-reactive antibiotics. In the case of venom desensitization, the effect can actually hold on long beyond the end of the desensitization treatment. Note that in all desensitization treatments, it's very important to monitor the patient closely as they reintroduce the trigger into his system and can potentially induce another shock. As a lot of the allergic responses in anaphylaxis are closely related to allergic asthma, there's a lot of innovation going on in that area. For example, some monoclonal antibodies have been found to directly act on IgE and reduce the number of IgE and IgE receptors in the body. Sodium chromoglycate inactivates mast cells and basically renders them useless, which of course is also very interesting in this case. So while there is innovation going on, that doesn't change the fact that the life-saving treatment in anaphylactic shock is epinephrine. To sum up, anaphylactic shock treatment comes down to first avoid if possible, then if you can't avoid, epinephrine as early as possible as often as necessary, a lot of patients need two or even more shots, stabilize the shock reaction, and then in the aftermath it might be interesting to do allergy tests and treatments and educate the patient about the use of epinephrine auto-injectors and how to avoid triggers in the future.